Hello, and welcome to week four of English 121. This week, um, I'd like you to begin by watching this lecture as usual. Um, then afterwards, I'd like you to actively read um, the selection from chapter three on character, um, just a couple of pages, 83 to 85. Then I want you to, and 116 to 117, um, then I'd like you to actively read two short stories. First, I'd like you to actively read and Brown, pages 92 to 101, and then actively read Cathedral, which is found on pages 105 to 116. Um, the assignment is to, um, uh, we're going to be doing a conversation about um, characters um, in Cathedral, and then you're going to be writing a reflection journal on the short story Young Goodman Brown. And by the end of this week, you should feel really comfortable identifying and critically analyzing characters in a short story. So let's um, talk a little bit about character. Um, character, um, a character in a short story is um, the imagined person who inhabits that story. And um, good writing usually, um, good writers usually make characters um, out of many characters they've come across in their lives. They don't just, um, you know, recreate their, their best friend Bob in, you know, in their short story. They, um, they amalgamate. They bring, like, little attributes from all these different characters um, to make um, one really interesting, quirky human character. Um, there's a really interesting video on character. Um, in our e-text, um, it's the, at the beginning of chapter three. If you click on the video, it'll give you the introduction about character. I really um, encourage you to watch that first. Um, then, as you're reading um, 83 through 85, I want you to think about um, <coughs> some of these terms because they're important to understand as you're talking about character and as you're writing about character to be able to use these terms. So there are there are stock characters. Um, these are characters that we see again and again, um, like the um, uh, Prince Charming of fairy tales, right? Um, the Mad Scientist of horror movies, or um, you know these characters that appear again and again, especially in in TV programs. You see them again and again. Um, those characters um, often. Um, we don't even we don't we don't connect with them because they they aren't doing anything new. What a character always needs is some sort of motivation. Um, it's a reason to behave as they as they do. Like they need something that's driving them. Usually, it's connected to the crisis in a story, but they need this motivation in order to um, um, to to be interesting to us as readers. Um, there's two types of characters in a story, and you should, you should be able to identify whether one, uh, one from the other when you're writing about character. Hint, hint, you should try using these words in your um, post this week. Um, a flat character um, is, a, is a character that, um, that never changes um, uh, throughout the story, just stays the same, um, doesn't, doesn't evolve, doesn't change. Um, and usually only has one trait or feature. Um, usually, stock characters are flat characters, right? They they just they're 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 um, they never surprise us. They only do one thing, and they they don't really change. They they always stay the same. Whereas a round character is um, a character you can also call it a um, round and flat are very very similar to static and dynamic. But a round character has um, Lots of different um, um, attributes. Um, they're 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 um, um, they they grow over the course of the story. Um, they they aren't just uh, they they seem human. They have the the attributes of people of people we would know, right? Um, and they change um, like a dynamic character. So flat are usually static characters. They stay exactly the same. They don't they don't change over the course of the story. Whereas a round character is dynamic. Um, he or, see, or she changes throughout the course of the story. Um, in literature today, there's a lot of, um, you know, generally the idea of a hero um, is, uh, you know, someone who goes out and they're heroic, you know, they're, they're cur they have courage, they, 
they have, um, you know, they, they act with integrity. Um, this is the hero of the story. And um, nowadays, what's more popular in stories is something like an anti-hero. So a hero that's missing some of those important heroic traits. Maybe they aren't so brave, right? But they overcome that fact um, to, um, in order to become the hero of the story. Um, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of common, um, hero heroic characters these days, like, um, you know, if you look at children's books, like Percy Jackson, um, suffers from, um, you know, from dyslexia and he's uh, kicked out of all these schools, right? And he doesn't realize that all these things that are, that are making him, um, have a difficult time are actually, the things that make him different and make him a hero. But at first, he seems like an anti-hero. He's lacking these things. Um, but then he uses those things. He becomes uh, aware of his, his powers in the end. Or someone like um, Harry Potter. You know, he turns out he doesn't understand that he is a hero at first. And then he comes to realize it. So <clears throat> let's, let's talk about when, uh, when you're thinking about characters you're reading, you want to always begin by identifying the most important character, the protagonist, right? Um, you also want to consider the ways the character's personalities and values are communicated. How do you know who this person is? Um, what in the story is showing you that? Um, then I want you to consider how the story's action grows out of a central character. How is the, how is the crisis connected to this main character? So when you're writing about um, character, here's the things I'd like you to think about. Who's the main character or protagonist of the story? What are the, are the character's physical, mental, moral, or behavioral traits? Which of these seem important to the action of the story? Does the main character have an antagonist in the story? Or someone who seems to be holding them back from what they, their motivations, from what they want? How do they differ? How is the antagonist different than the protagonist, right? Does the way the protagonist speaks reveal anything about his or her personality? If the story is told in the first person, what is revealed about how the protagonist views his or her surroundings? What is the character's primary motivation? Does the motivation seem reasonable to you? Does the protagonist fully understand his or her motivations? In what ways is the protagonist changed or tested by the events of the story? So, thinking about that checklist, I want, I want you to really examine um, a story um, from the perspective of character. Um, I'd like you to actively read the short story Cathedral by Raymond Carver, and don't forget to read Carver's biography. Um, and find out when the text was published and then contemplate the title of the story even before you begin reading. Remember, that's your first step in active reading. Then after, you want to actively read the text, um, you know, asking questions while you're reading, circling words you don't know, uh, making connections, um, really actively read it. If you need to, read the story twice. You really want to be able to work with it. Then I'd like you to answer the questions that are listed before, below, um, and I'd really like you to use evidence from the text, that means quotations from the short story, just to support what you're saying. Um, first, tell us who is the main character or protagonist of the story. So who is the person that is most affected by the conflict of the story um, and changes over the course of the story? What is his motivation? Um, why, does he, why does he change? What character traits does he exhibit? Is he reliable or unreliable? How and why does he change over the course of the events of, a, of the story? What do we know about the other characters? The wife, the blind visitor, Robert. Um, discuss the significance of the cathedral um, that you see at the, that, well, that you see, that's funny. Um, it'll be funny once you read the story. Um, that you that appears at the end of the story. Um, what is the significance of that, and why is it important to the story? And then finally, I really want you to think about this final question: What is revealed about sight and seeing in the story? All right. Next, I'd like you to focus on Young Goodman Brown. This is by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, 
when you actively read it, um, of course, before you begin, I want you to look up the biography information about Nathaniel Hawthorne. This will really help you this time. It'll give you some of the answers below, actually, at least one of them. Um, and I really want you to think about when this text was written, because it was written a long time ago, and this affects how the language um, is written. It's really important that you pay attention to that and what topics are being discussed in this story. Um, then I want you to answer all of the following questions in a journal post. Remember when you write a journal post, you want to answer every single question I have down here and use evidence from the text to support what you're saying. The first question is, who is the protagonist in Young Goodman Brown and how do we know? Were the events in the forest a dream or did they really happen? Use evidence to support your answer. Do a character analysis of young Goodman Brown before, during, and after his journey in the woods. How does his character change <coughs> excuse me, based on the events of the story? Look up information about the Salem witch trials and Puritan, Puritanism. Um, what, referen what references do you find in the text to this historical event and this religion? This is where it's really going to help to look at when this short story was written and what time it's set. Um, when do you think this, this story takes place? Um, how does Hawthorne address the concept of faith in Young Goodman Brown? All right, guys, that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to be talking about setting and um, what that means when you're reading and analyzing a short story. We're going to read two of my favorite short stories. I know I say that all the time, but I really mean it. Um, the Storm by Kate Chopin, and To Build a Fire by Jack London. So, um, good luck analyzing these two stories, really looking at character. As always, please reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Um, you can stop by my office hours or set up a time for us to um, have a call. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys online.